Hey guys, the last video I did on Yu-Gi-Oh was pretty fun, and I've got a lot of these booster boxes sitting around, and Pokemon's next set, Lost Origin, doesn't come out for quite a while, so I figured I might as well open some Yu-Gi-Oh stuff because I've got more new Yu-Gi-Oh stuff than I do Pokemon. I feel like I've opened everything related to Pokemon already. But when I was looking through the booster boxes I had, I noticed on the side here, pretty much all of them have a different number of cards per pack, despite them all being modern Yu-Gi-Oh sets. So I found that pretty unique from Pokemon. I wonder why they do that. That's probably why I had the uh, card trick in the last video so messed up because the number of cards I think was different from the set that I opened. So I'm gonna try the same card trick. It was four cards from the back, but uh, I'm already seeing that this one has silver text. I, that one, <laughs> I do not, I didn't do any research. <laughs> I should have done some research before opening this. They all appear to have silver text, but that is the hollow. So maybe the card trick is actually four in this one as well. So the number one card in this set is only worth $128, which I mean, it's still fantastic. But the last set I did, Blazing Vortex, the number one card in that set was worth $520, and the booster boxes cost the same. So I would imagine if you want to open one of these for just the value, not the collecting purposes, then I would definitely go with Blazing Vortex. But I think the number of uh, decent value pulls you can get in this set is a lot higher I think I counted 21 cards that are over $10 in value, and the entire booster box is only $60, so... Okay, um, <laughs> I guess the card trick is different in this one because I did the exact same thing, four from the back, and then I get this. Uh, I mean, that looks fancy, but it's not a collector's rare or anything like that because I think all the borders and stuff are all hollow as well as like just around the cards picture as well so that's maybe an ultra rare i think oh i just looked it up that's a 14 dollar and 56 cent card so that already beats the last booster box video because the most expensive card i got in that one was less than five dollars so that's awesome and yeah it was actually called an ultra rare i just guessed but i got it right there is a higher tier rarity of that of that exact same card uh, that is called a collector's rare. I'll have to look up a picture of it just to get a more accurate idea of what it's supposed to look like. But that one is the third most expensive card in the set. And uh, <laughs> I looked up and didn't even look at the cards I was pulling through, so I got very confused. But uh, luckily, that one's in the right spot. Um, so maybe it's just the card trick works if it's a regular hollow but if it's not then it's going to be in a different spot so i'm thinking there's no point in me doing the card trick from now on i'm glad that's the case though because in the last booster box video i did blazing vortex every single card was in the exact same spot and i was talking about the card trick and uh if it wasn't like this then i would have sounded like i was completely crazy because that was not accurate at all but it just looks like there's a completely different card trick for every single set, which is super confusing because at least Pokemon's card trick sticks to the same number of cards for an entire era. Like the entire Sword and Shield set is four, all of Sun and Moon is four, and then X and Y is all three. So that makes it a lot easier to keep up with. That's a hollow, but the letters are gold. So I don't really know if that means it's more than just a gosh what's even the lowest tier is it just ultra rare is that the lowest tier i don't even know this is a 40 dollar card <laughs> i thought it was like a maybe 50 cent card or something but this is um the collector's rare of this is the number one in the entire set so the ultra rare is actually like the i don't know like 10th most expensive card, but yeah, it was $40, so I've basically already paid off the entire booster box. I haven't had a booster box paid off for so long in any of my videos. This is nice. I might have to open up some more Yu-Gi-Oh stuff because, wow. I've only opened two booster boxes, and the very second one pays itself off. 
I've probably had that happen like maybe two times in my Pokemon videos and I've gotten like I have like 65 Pokemon videos that I've recorded at this point two out of 65 and Yu-Gi-Oh is at 50% <laughs> Wow, what a difference. Well, I have two more booster boxes currently of Yu-Gi-Oh I didn't plan on purchasing anymore just because I personally never sell Yu-Gi-Oh stuff like I have it all listed but nobody ever buys Yu-Gi-Oh stuff from me but I mean based on how well this is going I might just purchase Yu-Gi-Oh exclusively to open because I'm sure I'm just getting crazy good luck right now but we'll see I, I want to open more to find out if this is just crazy good luck I think I prefer it this way though, like uh, Blazing Vortex, it had, you know, that one card at 500 something, then it had another card at 200, and then it kind of really dropped off after that, so it didn't have much else other than the top three or four. Uh, this set has, like I said, 21 cards that are over $10 in value. I prefer it that way because it just increases your chances so drastically of at least getting something. Like I said, the entire booster box, the most expensive card I got in the Blazing Vortex one, was $4.57. I'd much rather get a couple of $10 cards than one $4 card and then like 300 cards that are worth 50 cents or less. Unfortunately, with the way I record, I asked at the end of the last Yu-Gi-Oh! video if you guys wanted to see me open more Yu-Gi-Oh! stuff. Uh, with the way I record, I haven't even uploaded that video yet. It's scheduled for like, I don't know, two weeks from now or something. So I can't even get your feedback. So if all of you guys hated that first Yu-Gi-Oh! Booster Box video and everyone was telling me, please don't do that. Just stick to Pokemon. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll see your feedback soon. But, um, for now, I'm, yeah, here I am opening more Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I mean, I definitely want to open more, so I'm hoping you guys are okay with seeing something different for now. Like I said, I feel like I've opened every single thing I can think of in terms of modern Pokemon. And uh, normally Pokemon releases new sets a lot quicker than they currently are, but Pokemon Go, I think, came out the very first week of July, and then they weren't releasing any new products for the next uh, two months. They seem to release new stuff like every couple weeks usually, so I don't know what's going on. So I've seen a few of the rarity names at this point. I've seen Collector's Rare, Ghost Rare, and Starlight Rare. Hopefully at some point, if I continue opening these boxes, I'll eventually find a another, or at least one of those rarities because I think they look completely different from the normal ones. Like... I don't even know what to call this. It's just a hollow rare, I guess. And then there's an ultra rare. The only difference is the letters. The collector's rare, like the entire card is like lit up, which is crazy. I'm really tempted to try Dragon Ball Super sometime soon, just to see how well that one goes. If you guys know of any other high quality trading card games that you'd want to see me open, let me know. I was looking at some others like Attack on Titan and the quality is incredible. Incredibly low, so I do not plan on opening that, unfortunately. The Dragon Ball Super cards, though, look like they actually had some budget put into them, so they look pretty good. So I'm pretty excited to open them. I personally don't like Dragon Ball Super all that much. I like Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball a lot, but Dragon Ball Super is kind of disappointed with that, but... It's still going to have all the Dragon Ball characters I love, so I'm okay with opening it. As far as Yu-Gi-Oh, though, I feel like even when I used to play this as a kid, I didn't fully understand how this game worked. It's definitely a lot more complicated than the Pokemon TCG. I'm pretty confident if I wanted to, I could jump right back into the Pokemon TCG and wouldn't really even need to go over the rules or anything. I played that a lot more as a kid. It felt super simple back then. From what little I've seen, it does look a bit more complicated now with Pokemon abilities and stuff. They seem to interact much more with battles than they used to. 
abilities were kind of not really important at all back in the beginning of the TCG. I mean, with how much bulk I have, I could probably make a very competitive, viable deck. Even though I sell off my bulk, it comes back so quickly that I could just make another deck within like two months, maybe, if I had just sold off everything. Was that the exact same card twice? Wow, those look so similar, but the names are completely different. I haven't gotten anything with gold letters or ultra rares or secret rares, whatever it's called, in super long. So it looks like the beginning of the video gave me everything and then the ending is going to give me nothing. I should really have looked up the uh, expected pull rates on collector's rares, though. This is the third booster box of Yu-Gi-Oh! I've opened so far, and I've seen my friend open four boxes. <laughs> is that the exact same card I just got? But yeah, uh, so I've seen a total of seven booster boxes get opened, and I have not seen a single collector's rare yet, or ghost rare, or starlight rare, or any of the top tier rarities. I haven't seen a single one out of seven booster boxes, but... I guess that makes sense, because if it was only one in seven, then uh, the last set I opened... Oh, there we go. There's gold letters. I'll have to look that one up. The last set I opened, you know, had a $520 card, and the booster box cost 60 So if you got it every one in seven boxes, then uh, that would be literally profitable to just open Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> yeah, okay, I just looked it up. It's a $2.17 card. Better than nothing. I'm sure I'll get the hang of this eventually if I keep opening more Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, but at the moment, I am so confused, especially with every set, set switching things up on me. Like, all the letters being silver in this set, I have no clue what's going on with that because it definitely was not that way in the last set, and then the hollows not having silver letters, I just don't understand it. <laughs> But yeah, Blazing Vortex was absolutely not this way. All the cards had regular letters, not silver letters. So this is the last pack, but I might do something at the end where uh, because there's so many cards, 21 cards over $10 in value, there could have been some that I missed. There could be some like just regular hollows that are actually worth quite a bit because they're, I don't know, really competitive or something. So if there is anything that I miss, then I'll show it after this pack. But unfortunately, this is our hit in this pack, and you can only get one per pack in Yu-Gi-Oh! So we end it on a regular hollow. But yeah, um, I paid off the entire box between those two. Unless I got it wrong, I'll update you. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking through this, and from certain angles... The borders look completely normal. I think because I'm looking through my phone camera, it looks normal to me. But if you turn it, you can see that, yep, the borders are... <laughs> I got a collector's rare and I didn't even notice it. I just put it in a bulk pile. Uh, this is like the lowest value, possibly. I, I didn't look through them all, but um, this is probably one of the lowest value collector's rare. It's $13, which is still awesome because that officially means I'm profitable on this box if I manage to sell all these cards. But yeah, um, wow, I thought the collector's rare were, were a lot more noticeable than that. I can barely even see that. Not looking through the camera, but just in person. <laughs> I'm gonna have to be more careful in the future. Thank you guys for watching though. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave me a like, subscribe if you're new. I'll also have this booster box linked in the description if you want to purchase it. It'll be an affiliate link. I've also got other links if you want to support me. Other than that though, see you in the next video.